Hey, Han. Hi, Kimmy. How are you? We're back. We are back. Um, I'm good. I want to open my Dr. Pepper, my diet Dr. Kelp. Yeah, me too. I'm in need. I'm th- a thirsty bitch today. We gotta kick this off, right? Oh God, my nails might actually be too long for this one. I can do it for you. Ooh, yeah. The nails look great, by the way. They're like chromey. Yeah, thank you. Um, it was <laughs> Amanda's idea. I was just with her this weekend. It's actually so funny. When I saw her, she was like, "I love that I'm becoming this character on the podcast that's just referred to as best friend from home." And I was like, "Okay, well, I'm gonna keep running with that." So my best friend from home, Amanda, recommended these nails to me. Um, they're like a black base, and then you do the like Haley Bieber pearlescent over it. Oh. It took a while for me to warm up to them, but I think I like them now. And I don't know. I'm sure other women listening to this can understand the pain you feel when you pay a hundred dollars for a manicure and then you're not totally obsessed with it but yeah thank you for complimenting them i got them for an occasion i just came back from a music festival oh which one i went to electric daisy carnival in orlando also called edc edc correct um the more famous one is in vegas but we had an uber driver who was um, really well-versed in the, like, EDC world. And he said that he thinks Orlando is going to soon overtake Vegas for size and popularity. Oh, not take over the festival that's in Vegas. Just, Just, like, surpass it. Yeah, I guess take over is the wrong word, but more so surpass it. Um, That's exciting. But, yeah, cheers. Cheers to that. Go EDC. Let me just spill this on my white shirt. I hope Um, you do. But yeah, it was my first electronic festival and um, probably my last. (laughs) Really? Yeah. I just, I love electronic music, but after three days, that shit all sounds the same and it's just a lot of the same sound over Mm -hmm. and over again. And as much as I love EDM, I just was tired of it by the last day. Like we didn't even stay to see the Chainsmokers who were headlining, LOL. Because no one wanted to, I was like, I don't want to be here anymore. I'm so tired. And like, dude, I don't even do drugs. And I don't, I feel so bad today. I got back last night. I went to the gym today and I really thought I was going to die. And I mean, we drank, but not enough. Like, I don't even think I would consider myself drunk any of the days. Yeah. It's just a festival. Like, you're you're standing around, you're dancing, you're yeah. pushing through people. You're frat days flicking. on end. Yeah. <laughs> And you're in Orlando, so it's hot. Mm-hmm. You're sweating. You're covered got, in dirt and glitter and yeah. other people's body sweat. Oh, my God. Yeah, Blech. we got pretty lucky with the weather. It actually wasn't awful. And I oh, will good. say, in terms of other people's body sweat, as someone who frequents live music events, I will say that I officially think the EDM community is the most considerate and respectful group of people I have ever gone to a show with. I love that. I think it rivals like the metal scene, Mm -hmm. um, which I know also is surprising to a lot of people. But yeah, it was like we were maybe like eight technical rows back from the main stage a couple of times and you could like like put your arms fully out and not touch anyone i love that it's probably because everyone's rolling so hard no one wants to like bump into somebody and be everyone, responsible yeah. for a bad trip or something or like everyone's so sweaty doesn't molly make you yeah it makes i have you no sweat idea a lot. i've never done it but yeah. i'm assuming if you're on like molly or shrooms or acid or something like at a edm show or festival like you don't want to be touched by other people i feel like it could just like mm-hmm. like if I'm even drinking alcohol and someone touches me wrong, it ruins my entire evening. It depends on my vibe. You know how sometimes, like, you don't care. You're having such a good time. You mm-hmm. don't really mind if you're bumping into people. But then there are other times where you get bumped into and you're like, oh, I'm going to fight today. <laughs> I think like, it goes back and forth for me. It just depends. Yeah, I guess that's fair. I um, I feel like... More recently, I've been very hyper aware of like yeah. people touching me or getting in my bubble. And I'm like, as much as I want to see certain people, I don't need to be super close or totally. I don't need to be seeing all the openers or whatever. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which I think is maybe that's growing up. Yeah. I felt, I mean, I felt that way this weekend. There were a handful of people who I we've seen before. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't dying to see them in my like, previous years I would have wanted to check all of the boxes just to like say that I saw them again 
Yeah. But I skipped a bunch of people who we've like seen at Echo Stage just because I'm like, I don't really need to stress myself out trying to run between stages to catch like 15 minutes of this person set to then make it to the crowd. It was just crazy. Um, My least favorite part of the weekend was that um, the main sponsor of EDC was Four Loco. <laughs> Shut yeah. up. So um, I spent my weekend drinking Four Locos with my best friend from home. So it felt like we were back in high that, school. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Wow, that's yeah. a throwback for you. And they're just, I mean, I think everyone knows this. They're not good. Like, they don't taste good. They I taste like an energy drink that has alcohol in it. So the burn on the way down is so real. Yeah. But it was the best bang for your buck. And I will die on this hill because festival concert, like, venue prices are so expensive. And the Four Locos were $18. So were like the draft or the yeah. hands of Bud Light. That's what you get at like the baseball stadiums. Yeah. Or like the tall boy white claw. A single like rail drink was also eighteen dollars and the double was like twenty six. Yeah. So it was just like asinine prices. I got us three cocktails once instead of our four locos. I just like checked out because I was the first one to the front. $92. That's crazy. So was I smashing Four Locos all weekend? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, but I realized they're almost 14%. So it's basically like wine. And it's after they reformulated them too. Yeah. So while you're not drinking gasoline and cocaine. Yeah. Like it's probably the next best thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they the tall boys were five servings. So I was oh, like, shit. this is like having five glasses of wine. Yeah. That's like a I'm lot. set. I can literally get one when we get into the festival and then drink this from like five PM to eleven PM and be like sustained. Damn, are we gonna start drinking four locos again? Like maybe, Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Fuck. It was really good bang for your bu- I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um I love that. I got to see Medusa again. Wow. Who I know is one of our favorite friends yeah. stories. <laughs> that was fun. We had a bit of a dramatic night ahead of us and I was going to see somebody that I really wasn't prepared to see at a party and I got really drunk. And <laughs> I didn't realize it until we like got into Echo Stage and Medusa was on and I was like I was chatting people up yeah, the whole time. And then I started talking to Kimmy and she's like, I'm literally like, this is too much. And I was like, <laughs> like and then all of a sudden I was, I looked around and I was like, what am I doing here? Yeah. I gotta go. I'm Hannah way was too, too living much. living her best fucking life. She was making friends at the pregame, making friends at the concert. You were like whipping your hair back and forth. It was amazing. God. But yeah, I was like, Han, we just got a vibe to the music. And then... I ended up staying there alone because I hadn't really been drinking as much. And yeah. I stopped once, like, Hannah left because obviously I was going to be alone. And I was standing there. And I left right when he finished. And um, for anyone who lives in D.C. and has been to Echo Stage, you know that Ubers are a struggle. And it's also not in the best area. Mm-hmm. So we've kind of figured out, though, if you leave Echo Stage and go the opposite direction of where everyone else goes, which is to the trekkers down the street... <laughs> You can get an Uber quicker. True, but you are you have a higher risk because yeah. you're not where all the cops are and all the the whole group of everyone is right. waiting. So Lil Sober Me at like three thirty in the morning was like, Oh, I'm fine. I'm just gonna walk that way. It's it's basically like residences and wait for an Uber there. Mm-hmm. And I had one confirmed, it was just taking forever to get there. Um, but this night's really important to me because um I got uh, accused of being a prostitute for the first time in my life. And accused? I guess accused is the wrong word, okay. but I got like assumed okay. that I was. I was standing on the street corner and like it was remote. Like there was no one else around. There were no lights on in any of these houses. Again, it was like th- past three in the morning. Mm-hmm. And this guy <laughs> rolls down his window and he just like one ups me. Like, or looks me up and down, whatever that phrase is, I'm not sure, and goes, how much? And I went, what? (laughs) And then he pulled away. And I was like, no fucking way. (laughs) Like, and I don't know if he was being serious. Did you consider it? I mean, no. <laughs> I mean, it was too late. Yeah, I had to go It was too late at night. I was ready to go home. 
Um, but yeah, I, I look back on that fondly and I'm like, was it the leather skirt? I don't, I don't know. Who knows? It probably was just because there's like no one else around there. Yeah. And I love that you also like met like a 20 year old and befriended him as well. Mm. I did. His name is Gabe. I mean, we're not friends, but I have his number. Um, <laughs> hey, Gabe. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I forgot about this story, Anna. He was like really incessantly hitting on me and <laughs> I was not With interested. big, re- like black X's and yeah. like no wristbands. He and... was literally 20. He could not drink legally there. And he was like, where do you live? Like, blah, blah, blah. I was like, I live in D.C. And he was like, I go to UMD. And I was like, okay. Like, I'm not entertaining this. And then. You want to come back to my frat house? He was like, so am I like coming home with you? And I was like, no. And I looked at him. I was like, I'm, I was 27 at the time. I was like, I'm 27. And he was like, it doesn't matter. And I was like, it does to me. Age is just a number, baby. I was like, I'm not knocking on to the Wait, 20-year-old. Wait, I love that. I love that energy of like, so am I coming home with you tonight? Or like, Yeah. That's where I should start using that. He was really forward and I gave him my m- number. Really, I think it's just a means to appease him and like get him off my desk. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's so funny on Be Real, mm-hmm. it like comes up with suggestions for people you should add based on your contacts. Yeah. And because B roll is like a very Gen C thing, he pops up on it all the time. Oh God. I'm like, should I just add him? It would be funny. It just would be a him. good beat. There's a good bit. No way in hell he would remember me. No. Absolutely I should text not. him. You sh- I should text him. I should text him. him. No, I okay, I'm gonna use that pickup line. I also really love one of our friends used a pickup line one time and she said, I'm going home, are you coming? And I was standing mm. right there when she said it to this guy and I was like, Are you talking about me? No. Oh. I've done that before. Uh, maybe that's why she did it. Oh. That was the first time I heard someone actually use it in the wild because I was having a conversation with this guy. The one... And she came up and goes, hey, like, I'm going to go home. You coming? I love it. And I, I love like, the that's energy. Perfect. The one I'm thinking of that I used recently that you were in earshot of was it was me, you and said guy. And I said, OK, I'm going to going home and one of you can come with me oh right 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 yeah. right. that was a good one too thank you thank you very much you're like i'm calling my uber one of you can come with me and i was like <laughs> i just stared at him <laughs> you know later on he was like i really thought you wanted hannah to hang out and i was like i mean i did but that wasn't my main motivation. yeah i have priorities yeah good time girls code. look at us go <laughs> Sometimes I have confidence. It's few and far between. Sometimes but we have game, yeah. Yeah, I don't know, really know what affects it either. I'm just like, that was a random day, too. Like, we didn't even look cute. Like We were, we were like, sweaty from earlier in the day. Yeah, yeah, it, like, wasn't, like, a stepping out moment for me. I just was, like, yeah, in my element, I guess. I love being in the element. I know. I wish I could be in that element more. I know. Instead, I just, like, cower in the corner, and I'm like, do you think he likes me? Well, I feel like I get in an element, and then, like, someone will suck it from me. And mm-hmm. I'm like, please, no, I was doing so well. Yeah, well, we need to work on removing those people who suck your energy from you. Yeah. I don't like that. Yeah. I've been... um. I, I feel like that's something that I've seen on TikTok lately on, like, my For You page mm-hmm. has been, like, people talking about, like, especially parents and yeah. family now that it's almost the holidays. It's a hot topic. Yeah. And especially if you're on, like, a gay or queer side of TikTok, which I happen to be on, mm-hmm. a lot of people obviously have some toxic family issues. Totally. And people are, like, giving them, like... When this happens, like, you shouldn't feel bad for cutting them off. You shouldn't feel bad for setting a boundary. It's something I talk about with my therapist a lot, like, Mm -hmm. setting boundaries. So these also always intrigue me. And she always recommends, by the way, I my sister is getting this book, and then when she's done, I'm going to read it. But the book she always recommends is um, The Book of Boundaries, Set the Limits Mm. That Will Set You Free by Melissa Urban. I love Um, that. And so I'm really excited to read that over the holidays. But I always see... Like, people come on and, like, if you have the narcissistic parent or, Mm -hmm. like, the people that aren't just going to accept you and they're the people that don't pour into your cups. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's also a thing that's been said a lot lately. Yeah. Like, it's okay to set boundaries with those people and sometimes the boundary is... I'm going to say no, and sometimes the boundary is I'm. We can't talk. Yeah, I know. I feel like I've been struggling recently, and I guess like in the last year, with 
basically not taking the time for myself when I recognize someone's behavior like that. Like they're only ever talking about themselves or bringing up their crises or their issues and they're never really giving back to what you're going through or being there to listen. Mm -hmm. I've found myself dealing with it and dealing with it and dealing with it until I get to the point where I snap Mm -hmm. And then I don't want to even talk to them anymore. It's like I flip a switch. Very Gemini of me. Yeah. But I flip this switch where I'm like, I don't, I I don't want you in my inbox anymore. Like, I don't want to entertain this conversation because it's only ever about you. You don't even like ask about me or my day Mm -hmm. or what I'm going through. I can't be, I can't be your therapist. Like, yeah. Though the one I saw recently was... Like, when you have a friend that's always in, like, a crisis mode, mm-hmm. and it's, like, everything that happens to them is a crisis, and they yeah. need your support, it's, like, the boy who cried wolf type oh deal, gosh, and I you're can't. just, like, it drains you, and yeah. then you don't have space for you to have something, because either there's no room for it, or you're self-conscious it's going to make someone feel that way. Yeah. And I think it's very interesting, also, as... Um, You know, growing up as a female, Mm -hmm. we have been sort of wired to and like it has been thrust upon us that you should say yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Like you should always be able to like roll over, show your belly, say yes, be obedient. Yeah. Help people support, like be a good little wife. Like, you know, whatever. Can I do put a quick pin in the obey wife thing? Yeah. Have you been to a wedding where there is and obey in the wedding vows only For the woman, it's like, I promise to love, respect, and obey. I have been to a few weddings, and when I say my jaw dropped, I was like, who who is still saying that? I've heard those ones. I haven't been to one, but I've heard them. And the other one that gets me is the passing off of the bride to the groom. And if it's somebody who traditionally has their dad or someone walking them and the dad hands them off yeah sometimes like whoever is officiating will say something about it and who gives it's like oh now like the now the father has like given the no whatever so it's she's on un- <laughs> it's basically like how the transfer of powers yeah. you know what I mean and oh, it's I like being that. mentioned I think that was like my sister went to a wedding and someone said it it was like one of her really good friends who's not very religious and yeah. I don't the person who was officiating was like you know, someone that they found. So it was like, I guess something that he just said. So everyone in the, that was watching was kind of like, wait, what? Yeah. I hate that. <laughs> Cause it was like, no one was expecting it. Yeah. Um, I don't like, I don't like either of those. Yeah. But I mean like that's the, th- you're, you're just supposed to, even if you don't like it. Yeah. You're not allowed to say anything. Yeah. Women should be seen, not heard. So get back in the kitchen. Kimmy, <laughs> why are you out here? <laughs> that's a great question. Um, which I love saying when men are like, keep talking mm-hmm. or try and talk over me, I go, excuse me, honey, women are talking. Yeah, make people making people feel bad in real time. Yeah, is kind of fun. I'm not gonna lie. I'm like, honey, the women are talking. Do you mind going back in the kitchen? <laughs> oh my gosh! I, I typically I'm say it run with that to bit. like our guy friends who get it, but I yeah. can't wait to say it to someone who doesn't understand yet. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna pocket that one. Yeah, but it's just really hard to like be being grown up in sort of this role. Yeah. Of like you were expected to be a people pleaser. Totally. And like, you know, smile. Hey, honey, smile. smile more. You should smile more. Dude, I feel like this Where's gets your smile? me all the time because I'm so f- fucking confrontational. Yeah. And I'm comfortable in confrontation. It doesn't make me uncomfortable. I can have an argument. I can talk to you about why you hurt me or why I hurt you. It's something I've always been fine with. And I most more times than not speak what's on my mind. I mean, I'm not like a huge bitch, you know, not running around trying to hurt people's feelings. Only like 98% of the time. Right. But this like narrative started the last five ish years, like since I've been an adult, where they're like, oh, Kimmy's so mean. You're so mean. You're so mean. Yeah. And I'm like, because. Where did that come from? I don't know. And I think it started with me like you know, maintaining standards for dating. And I think, yeah, I was going to say, I don't think any of the women like started it or no, perpetuated no, it, no, which no, is no, so no. interesting. Yeah. It's all been perpetuated by random men associated with us. I think this has mainly been perpetuated by the random men in our lives, like in and out. For sure. Um, But yeah, it like really started hurting my feelings the last few years because I've had like people mention it in front of my family before and be like, yeah, Kimmy's such a bitch. And I'm like, I think it's literally just because... 
I haven't settled on a man who treats me like shit. Yeah, it's and I you're tell not them. gonna roll over and be like, "Oh, I'll excuse that terrible yeah. comment they just made about misogynistic or yeah. racist or whatever." You're, we're yeah, gonna I'll be, like, be like, "Hey, can't say can that. you not." Yeah. yeah, that was really rude what you said. Yeah, or even in, like in a relationship or in dating, if I, if like someone does something that I don't like and I want to invest the time in them, because of course if I don't, then I just will walk away. But if I want, if I like them and I want to invest the time, I'll just be, like, "Hey." this really bothered me. It's early days. Can we fucking fix it so that we can like go on the right foot? Yeah. And I feel like, I don't know, that level of confrontation has in the past been perceived as me being like rude or inconsiderate. And I think it's because all the men are just like, no, she's supposed to be nice and just accept it. Yeah. It's also like, I'm not going to sugarcoat everything and be like, do you, what if, it would be really great if you could. I'm gonna be like, I need yeah. you to communicate better because I feel like shit. Yeah. Can you do that for me? Yeah. And they're going to be like, you're such a bitch. And it's like, no, no. because I didn't wish wash about yeah. and like yeah. appease your ego. Yeah. And I guess there's something to be said for like appeasing a man's ego to get something sometimes. But like sometimes <laughs> we've all done it. We've all been there. Yeah. Yeah. It's just it's tough. But there is something to be said for like if you wanted to, if you wanted to, you would versus <laughs> you like to, you would. being like, OK, done. Let's. Yeah. You know, sometimes when I hear that phrase about dating and girls are like, if he wanted to, he would. And I'm like, yeah, well, I kind of want to and I don't. <laughs> also, does he know that you want him to? Yeah. Well, I listen. There are certain things I concur, but sometimes you're like, I wish he would like blah, blah, blah. And, yeah. Like, you know, create custom flower bouquets. And I'm, I'm like, like well, it's kind of it's really sweet. But yeah, I don't really even know how to do that where I probably wouldn't <laughs> have thought to do it until very recently. Yeah. I think that if he wanted to, he would thing is also funny because like sometimes we're all just tiptoeing around how to act in dating. For sure. So I'm like, I don't like I want to and and I don't sometimes because I'm like trying to fucking figure shit out. Yeah. I I feel like also like the dating like etiquette. Yeah. It just it goes so it change everything changes so quickly, especially in the digital age. Yeah, and then <laughs> everyone has different like I feel like dating expectations mm -hmm. ten years ago are so different from now. Also, I know, like I said on the last episode, like I just want someone to ask me to go study. <laughs> exactly, but at the same time, I'm like I've done the work on myself, and I know yeah. now like what I need is not going to always align with dating traditions yeah. or dating etiquette or whatever yeah which is why again like speaking to confrontation i think it's kim if you want to invest in someone enough it's important to put those needs pretty like up front yeah like i need this level of communication like i need whatever this level of physical touch like you know to hang out this much yeah. blah 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 i'm like if you're texting me once a week maybe yeah but you know if you're into me i'm gonna put in the effort because yeah totes it just needs to be reciprocated. Um, I want to go back. It's not really related to dating at all, but you said etiquette. Yeah. And it just it just put a little spark in my brain. Um, I flew yesterday, and um, I I realized a new thing that is gives me social anxiety okay. out in the wild about flying, which I know we've talked extensively about on this podcast. You have some trauma. I have some flight trauma. I hate planes. Well, let's talk about it more. Yeah. Or we're just going to keep you know, therapizing it all on this podcast. Um, I got an aisle seat, which I also hate because it makes me motion sick now. Um, I got an aisle seat. Thanks Delta for absolutely nothing. But <laughs> <laughs> Delta Airlines, life is a fucking, fucking nightmare. nightmare. Because we hate you and life is a fucking nightmare. <laughs> yes, precisely. Thank you, John Mulaney for that one. Um, anyway, I'm in the aisle and the plane lands and I was like 23 rows back. So we were not moving for a while and we pull up to the gate and everyone starts getting up and like, you know, the men in the aisle are all like, I need to be up first. Also, hang on. There is a new thing I've realized when the plane lands, people in the back of the plane who don't have stuff in the overhead bins get up and walk down the aisle to the front what the fuck is up with that you wait your turn sit your ass down wait until you get to row 36 or whatever the fuck it is and then you walk the only thing i have for that this is only allowed if you it, are making missing a, a connection yeah yes. making a tight connection i agree 
And I wish that there was like a neon sign that people could hold up that said, I'm trying to make my connection. Yeah, there are once in a while, sometimes the um, flight attendants will come on and be like, the connections for blah, 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 mm-hmm. like, please go first. Totally. Um, Which I love. That doesn't happen all the time. It happens when, like, you're fucking delayed extra. It's yeah. not like, oh, I only allowed an hour in between my flights and that we waited 30 minutes. A couple weeks ago when I flew, I think that happening was that case mm. because I then, like, passed all of the girls that did that in the airport, like, sprinting. Yeah. But last night, but, yeah, I think it was just people being rude and wanting to get home. There are so many people who are going to do that. Yeah. And just, we're just stand up and stand wait. Up. And I'm like, okay. I get it if you're 6'6", six, six, but I also don't I get don't. it because fucking wait. It's already been two hours. And you can just wait 10 more minutes. Airplane is literally, it's not tall anyway. Yeah. I So I had the aisle and everyone starts standing up. And the guy in the middle seat starts like, like shuffling in his seat. And, and like leaning forward and looking at me and like all right calm down gary and i and i literally was like what do you want where do you want me to go and someone on the opposite of the aisle of me a man had already stood up and filled that space so I, there so was his butts in your face and there was physically nowhere for me to go and he kept like leaning forward and like looking around and i was like I, you can't rush me out of this i have physically Don't nowhere else me. to go and it made me like it gave me social anxiety because I was like, it's on me to get up and like move our row out. Mm-hmm. But why are you pressuring me when the freaking gate door hasn't even been opened Those yet? Are, that's what I'm talking about, where you are like in, ingrained as a woman to like make yourself small and not yeah. occupy oh space gosh, not and blah, blah, blah. Space. And you're like, oh, no, I'm in the way. What can I do to get out of the way? You're sitting here having anxiety because you feel in the way. Mm hmm. Because men on either side of you are making you feel small and in the way. I felt in the way on in an airplane seat that I paid three hundred dollars for. <laughs> Correct. And I started doing that where when I noticed that men are being really stupid about like wanting to take up more space or like be yeah. in the way themselves. I'm like, I'm not gonna move. It's like one of those things where if a man's walking towards you and you're walking towards them, oh yeah, you normally move out of the way because you're a woman. And I'm like, no. I actually learned a really cool psychological trick for that. Um, Is for. It- that you look straight ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. And it works. It does. Um, so for our listeners, this is now a psych podcast. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you, yeah, if you're walking past someone, instead of like looking at them or looking at the ground, if you look like past them, like over them, they will most likely move. Yeah. Out of your way. Yeah. We're not moving for men anymore in 2023. No. We're taking up space. We're girl spreading. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're girl boss. We're girl bossing, we're gatekeeping, we're gaslighting, we're girl spreading. Can I? Wait, also, I mean, I'm thankful to be a woman for many different reasons, but one that recently got me that I thought was so funny is that I feel like all women share this too. What we prefer the booth. If we're going to on a date, I want the comfy side. I don't want the chair. Yeah. No one wants the chair. And I went on a date last week and I just, he was like, you want the booth? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, fucking obviously. She I didn't even, say like, that. You didn't even know me. I didn't say that, but I was like, it just. I wish she did. I was like, it just it was ingrained in my brain that I get the booth no matter what. Yeah. And when he asked, I was like, oh, I guess maybe I shouldn't just take it. Yeah. But I did. But you could just take it. Yeah. 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 Because you deserve it. Because you also work hard and you also pay $300 for your airline seats and yeah. don't let anyone make you feel uncomfortable. Yeah. Sit there on your iPod with your Kindle and read your magazines and whatever else you're doing. Watching Top Gun 2 on the screen and Light a me. cigarette. Go yeah. to jail. <laughs> Who cares? Specifically Top Gun 2, not on my own screen, but on the person in front of me. <laughs> Look, if you aren't watching a movie or a show on someone else's screen on the plane, what, what are, are you doing? doing? Literally, what are you doing? Why are you even there? I, I recently it's a saw... canon event. You can't interfere. Oh, I recently saw, and I'm, I don't know why I'm even going to say this because I have no supporting evidence, but I saw a headline that said that there is a psychological reason for why we are more inclined to watch someone else's screen on a plane than ours. And I didn't read That's it, crazy. so I can't follow up. But maybe if you tune in next week, I'll maybe circle we'll do back. some research for yeah. you. Yeah, <laughs> this is now a research psychological research podcast. Yeah, I also have. Speaking of also being confrontational, I'm just gonna skirt back to that. One of my favorite confrontation and argument techniques is also a psychological fun fact. Oh, where the the fewer words you say, oh yes, and like the more quiet you are, the more likely your opponent or the person you're having a conversation with will 
contradict themselves, back themselves into a corner, basically like giving you ammo to then win the argument. It's the same thing as like a sales tactic, which we've talked yeah. about before, where you, you speak just shut less. the fuck up. You shut up and let them fill the void mm-hmm. and they'll keep talking and they'll give you enough information. Yeah. Whether you're mad at them or not. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Just let people spew. Yeah. Oh, God, um, and they be spewing. They be spewing. Um, I said I was thankful for being a woman, and then it made me realize that Thanksgiving is coming up. Oh, my God. And this episode will actually come out Thanksgiving week. Yeah, and then the week after, because we'll be away, we yeah. will have an episode. So. Yeah, so everyone's going to have to so we'll just go listen to this twice. A little holiday break. Yeah, a holiday. On a holiday. Um, but what are you thankful for this year, Hanny? Um, I'm thankful for you, Kimmy. Oh my god! And our podcast I'm and our for listeners. You too. This has been so exciting. We, we, I, well, I at least needed a creative outlet. And, totally. Um, some just something different to do. And yeah, this has been very fun, and I've learned a lot of stuff. Yeah, I agree. And I, a lot of people have been asking me lately, just like how it's going, and you know how many people listen. And I'm like, I honestly don't know the answer to that because it's become basically like a hobby for us like we just sit here we shoot the shit for an hour we have sushi on the way tonight so like it's just like a little hangout and it's so fun for us I feel like in the beginning I was so gung-ho on like creating so much additional content and like reels and blowing up and trying to go viral and like all this stuff just because I first of all that would be sick but (laughs) Also, just because I thought it was, like, going to be – I don't know if I thought it was going to be easy, but we have had no time, ladies yeah, and gentlemen, and commitment. everyone. It's a commitment. Um, It's, like, a second job. But, yeah, now I just like the one hangout we get a week while yeah. on top of all the well, other times yeah. we hang out. <laughs> I just like having – we've always loved our Kimmy Hannah time. Mm-hmm. I've always been thankful for our little hangouts, and I feel like this is nice carved yeah. time for us. I agree. And thankful for Diet Dr. Pepper. Oh, so good. Yeah. I will say, I am especially thankful for this year. Um, like, our girl group, mm-hmm. I f- in D.C. specifically, so my college friends, my friends from home, no one get offended. I'm talking <laughs> specifically right now. She's talking about you. I love you all, obviously, dearly, so, so much. I heard that she hates but you. But you guys are, are steady in my life, and... Our DC group is tumultuous because it's a very transient city. So a volatile group of women. So and people, but people move in and out. For like sure. and I feel like I've had so many different friend groups in DC, and it feels very nice. But specifically, right now, I'm very thankful for how steady our group of girlfriends is. It feels like just like secure. I don't know how to. Yeah. Explain that. I think we've all also hit a stride this past year um, of, like, working on ourselves and totally. some self-awareness. Yeah. And, like, Honesty. Very honest with each other. Improving yeah. our communication, understanding each other's needs and styles and how yeah. we think and operate. So, and, like, expectations of each other. Yeah. There's yeah. been, like, a lot of grace now has been, like, understood. So it's, like, 100%. instead of just getting, like, confused and upset about certain things, we're, yeah. like... They just think differently. They process information differently. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So I'm very thankful for our girls group. Yeah. Um, it definitely keeps me sane. Love you guys. Love you all so much. I'm so lucky to have such a... Holly says she loves you too. Wow. Yeah. I just feel lucky to have such a nice support system. So that's what I'm thankful for. Is Holly part of the girl group? Yes or no? Obviously. Okay. Yeah. Um, Are you looking forward to going home for Thanksgiving? I'm not going home for Thanksgiving. <gasps> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Um, uh, first of all, flights were like $800. Um, that's the downside of living where other people vacation. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a Florida phrase. It's embarrassing, but yeah. true. Because everyone else is going down there for the holidays, and it's yeah. expensive. And I didn't feel like it because I'll also be home like three weeks later. True. So I'm just wasn't – couldn't do it. Couldn't swing it. But speaking of our lovely girl group – yeah. Me and Lucy are spending Thanksgiving together and we have all these fun plans. We're going to go to a Christmas market. We're going to make food. We're going out on Wednesday night in College Park. Wow. I know. So I'll get my Wednesday before fix in. I'm so excited. Wow. I know. It it's, sounds so like like chill but exciting at the same time. Yeah. And like wholesome. I texted her today. 
I was like, I think I'm more excited for Thanksgiving this year than I have been. Yeah. Because, like, your mom is hostess with the mostest. She is. So I feel like you guys always have, like, such, like, a spread and everything. And And it can be a bit stressful sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And you get gussied up. Yeah, we get gussied up. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Obviously, I love going home. But this year was, like, looking a little bit different um, in my family. So it made sense for me to stay here. Well, that'll be really exciting. Yeah. What about you? Um, my family is super chill and laid back on a lot of stuff. I'll be going home to Pennsylvania. Love it. And, um, my aunts are coming down from New York. Nice. So we'll have some extra people, but we're always like super chill. We like all cook together basically. And, um, we just make really good food and just like sit and hang out. Your mom, Hannah's mom, everyone has made me food that I think about daily. It is so good. Like there are recipes that... She made it, Hannah and I, when we went up to visit one time, that I still, like, it'll just hit cross my mind, and I'm like, wow, <laughs> I could really go for that right now. I can try and make it for you. I can't guarantee it'll be made the same as Jay, yeah. but. So um, good. Yeah, we always have, like, a super chillax, so it's, like, PJs, you know, so gross, showered, yeah. but no makeup. Yeah. Like, just hanging out. That sounds incredible. Yeah. I've never had a relaxing holiday, but I'm looking well, forward to someday you having one. one. You can come home with me. <laughs> well, I that's why I'm excited for this year. I think it's actually going to be relaxing. Yeah. Even even the COVID Thanksgiving that we hosted here with like six of our friends was stressful as hell mm-hmm. because we woke up at like 10 a.m. to cook. We did everything oh. from scratch besides the turkey, which we ordered from Honey Bake Ham. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I love cooking and stuff, and I feel like we aren't one of those families to plan out, like, what needs to go in the oven here, there, and everywhere. But yeah. Like, like a yeah. time sheet. Yeah. I, yeah. Can, I, I remember those days when yeah. all the family was around, and I'm just like, whew. Yeah. It's a lot. Well, yeah. we hope everyone listening has a wonderful Thanksgiving and that you – Think about what you're thankful for. We know, obviously, the number one slot is the fact that Hannah and I started a podcast this year. So fucking welcome. Yeah. Um, Tell all your family is still listening. (laughs) I hope you put us on while you make your Thanksgiving foods. Yeah. Um, and you listen from start to finish, and you watch us, and you enjoy this, and you argue about our hot takes with your family members who might not agree, and your parents get into arguments with you because they're like, "Do you do this?" Yeah. Yeah. Is this what we paid for? Is this who you're friends with? <laughs> These girls are terrible influences. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah but thank Amen. you. Thank you yes. for listening. Thank and you, for everyone. And tuning in every week. We're thankful for you. And uh, so, yeah, spread some thanks and love this season. And yeah. we'll, we'll see you after the break. Yeah, we'll see you in two weeks. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, stupid idiots. Love you, bye.